Um, so, yeah, on that note, you can donate to us. Oh, and then, like, uh, there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi. Just going to restart that sentence. Um, yeah, so you can donate um, to our links at the bottom of our stream. Uh, all the money will be going to special effects, um, and special effects make the lives of physically disabled people better through the use of custom gaming peripherals. Um, so you can donate to the link that was just put into the chat, or you can donate via bits and subs to the channel. Um, and you can also buy our merch, which the link for that is in the stream description. Um, we've got shirts and we've got hoodies and some really cool designs on there. Um, and without further ado, here's Clever Pigeon with Downward Any Percent. Um, please introduce yourself and give us a countdown when you're ready so we know when to start. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Clever Pigeon. This is Downward. Um, it's a first-person parkour game, a little bit like Mirror's Edge, but there's some magic involved. Um, I'm gonna, I'll tell you when time is, it'll fade to white and I'll tell you. Um, go. Thank you. Right, so first we have this little is this place? Sort of dreamy tutorial area. It teaches you about orange walls, which you can climb. Oh. What? Okay, that is a lot of sensitivity that I wasn't ready for. Um, I thought I fixed that. Never mind. Don't worry. Um, there we go. I must be dreaming. Something. That blue thing there. That's an anomaly. These things, the anomalies, you can hold space and you get to jump in midair. Um, I should mention, by the way, there are a few faster strats that I won't be doing because they're really recent and I didn't have the time to learn them, as in, I only found out they existed last Wednesday. Uh, so, I don't know. Look, go on speedrun.com and search for downward and look at the world record if you want to see some of the ridiculous things some other people have found, but I can't do that for you, unfortunately. That being said, it should still be an interesting run. Dream is over. Guy wakes up on the floor. Here we get introduced to the dash, which is the bread and butter of the game's uh, movement. If you dash off something, you can serve momentum, and you can also bunny hop uh, if you time a jump precisely out of a dash. That was interesting. Okay. Oh. Never mind that. We're fine. We're right. We're right here. Sensitivity is slightly higher than I'm used to, even though I thought I fixed that. Now I've been given the mark, which is a teleport ability. And by doing that dash off a ledge, we've skipped a portion of the game that involves some more of the magical stuff right. involving what are called the three planets which are the cause of the, the apocalyptic scenario this game finds itself in um, we'll be interacting with the planets a bit later but for the moment um, we're gonna stick to earth as it is This is a golem. It's got something in it called a dry artifact. For some reason... Oh, no. For some reason, this golem has a bit of uh, time when it's weak before it starts attacking. It's the only one that does, uh, and you can grab the artifact right out of it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. Uh, 
but eventually it'll, uh, well it should, turn blue and I'll be able to get it. Please, thank you. Right, where did it go? Alright, well that was a pain. Thankfully that's the only one of those we have to deal with. All the other dry artifacts we need are just around. Alright. Oh yeah. The um, traveller scavenger, whoever you're playing as, has these pithy little quotes whenever you open one of the light gates, they're called. So look out for those. There's one in particular that um, is interesting. These fountains refill your health and your stamina. First thing we're doing is going over here. We're going to get another sort of artifact which will unlock us some other anomalies to use so that we can get up to the top of this great big cliff. Up here. Before we make our way up, We've got to hit some checkpoints because this game's checkpoint system is very strict. Uh, so if you miss one, you're completely out of luck. And if you don't, did I not hit that? I didn't hit that. That was there. We go. Bit of improv. That was easy. If you don't hit one of the checkpoints. Um, it won't register your progress right. properly, yeah, so yeah. you will have to go back to the checkpoint you missed and hit it um, before you can actually move on with the story and unlock like, the ending and such. Those are drones. They are evil. They come after you. It's not the worst thing in the world, though. Though they do do a decent bit of damage. Oh. Okay, I'm not sure what that was. more golems but as I said we don't need any more of them. That drone is going to see us. Thankfully it didn't hit us actually, that's good. So we're putting a mark there, we're going to go into this temple, get introduced to some story stuff and then we're going to teleport back out with the mark and then we'll start going off into the um, Sort of subsections of the game where you find things called relics and then you bring them back here and um, it helps you unlock more of the game and get further in it to the end. There are a lot of artifacts and relics and such. Um, hold on a minute. I'm going to grab that just in case. Now we're just going to fall right down the cliff and land on an anomaly right there at the bottom. And they completely cancel. That's the line I was talking about. I have a love-hate relationship with that line. But anyway, anomalies cancel your um, any falling momentum you might have. So you can just bounce off them. You'll notice me jump sometimes into dialogue triggers. I missed that one. 
because it lets me keep my speed a bit more because you walk more slowly when you're in one. I'm skipping a cutscene trigger here. Now we're using the first planet, Planet Gamma. Um, so we didn't actually see over the cliff before, but it was just a big empty cliff. But the Gamma Planet affects gravity, and now there's a lot of floating stuff that we're going to parkour, parkour through some of and skip some of as well. And we're going to collect yes. some artifacts along the way. So apologies to interrupt, but we have another donation. So, oh yeah, I was uh, about this orange one is by the orange walls are uh, monks for walls. fifteen pounds, walls, and um, he says, "We'll donate another fifteen if Clever Pigeon so does his D and D voice." To those specific pattern surfaces. Now we've deactivated the gamma planet, so we can keep going. Okay, and now. Just save there out of habit, but it's also a good place to save. Um, what I did there is go to, I used the look at target command uh, button and also uh, used that slingshot thing I got from the last artifact I collected at the same time and it conserved a bunch of momentum and let me go all the way to the top of um, that cliff, that pit. Now, aside from some collecting, we're basically done. I'm gonna grab a few more of these and then be on our way. Come on, give it up. Thank you. You can chain these slides together. Did I mention that? I don't know, but you can. Notice I'm at about half health. Um, thankfully, going through this loading zone will refresh my health to full, uh, as you can see, which is good because you need full health to make this. Right, once again, put a mark down. Oh, didn't load. Um, and now we've got a handy slingshot shortcut. I'm gonna stand here for a minute. Make sure I get that checkpoint. You can very easily lose a run to hitting, uh, or to missing one of those checkpoints. You've gotta stand there and wait down, cancel momentum with the slingshot again. Something's following me. Okay. I made it through. Um, I made it out of its range without it um, blowing up first. Now we're in a lava area. Oh. Um... Don't worry about the tortoise right now. We'll get to her. For now, she's just walking in a circle. Yes. Now we're going to activate the beta planet, uh, which affects heat and lava and such, surprisingly. Um, and doing that, will allow us to cross into the Dark Temple. If you don't activate that planet, this thing is too uh, too low. 
the lava lake is too low for you to actually make it. Now, from my climbing the wooden things, I've buffered a um, climb, so I'm able to use it there and skip a large part of this temple. Power up. Uh, and this power up lets you activate those. We're not going to follow the trail like it wants us to. Instead, we're going to walk her over here, put them up. I don't know if you heard us, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if you heard us, but we had to donate to that tower as well. <laughs> um, right. He's very funny, isn't he? Um, sorry, let me get through this. Yes. Um, I didn't hear that donation. Um, oh, no, that's fine. We're here. Um, so, what I did there, I was able to conserve momentum out of a mark teleport and go up. He, wanted, he said he'd donate fifty pounds uh, for uh, for my D and D character's voice. I don't normally like embarrassing myself like this, but it's for charity. So yes, the D and D voice is something like this. I don't I don't know if that pleases you enough. <laughs> don't make me do that again. What's going on? Whoa, where am I? This is being funny. That's better. Right. You can't have two of these activated at the same time, so I have to activate them all mid-air. Come back out, grab this. Got to wait here to talk to the old man. And then we can just fall to our deaths. And it will save our progress, but it will put us back here, which is handy. Oh, this is excellent tortoise RNG, it's right in front of us. Right. So, one of the checkpoints is talking to that tortoise. I got both conversations from it, but the only mandatory one is the second one. Um, I attempted to stay out of range of the first one while clicking its head to activate the second one, but I got both. But it is not a huge time loss, because you can mash through both dialogue things at the same time if you get them both. He's found me. We've got this, which we can climb. Didn't manage to get a bunny hop off it, but bunny hops are very precise, so it's not too big a deal. I'm not sure why that didn't register. Fill. We're going to put down the second relic now. Oh great, I missed and... Uh, never mind, that's fine. I'll make it quick. Just dash a bunch. Come on, please. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. Weird reaction with the lag, I think. Oh, no, come on. Okay, the game behaves strangely sometimes. Um, and it won't register things happening properly. I need to quit the main menu uh, and continue and then put that mark. Go and put that relic back uh, again. The game is like this sometimes. There are worse things that can happen 
Uh, there are ways to soft lock or ways to just confuse the game into not really understanding what it's supposed to do with its checkpoints, but hopefully. Hey, I got the second one. Put it down. There we go. That'll do. There's another of these I need to wait for. Good. Right, third and final sub sub subsection. Um, this, if you're following the theme, would be where you meet the Alpha Planet, but we're going to do a very large puzzle skip that skips three puzzles and all of the interactions with the planet. So not, on, not only would you meet the Alpha Planet, but there's uh, one puzzle for each planet in this area. We're not going to do any of them. Stay out of their way. Pull down here. And then we can mark jump all the way up here. That was a really good one. It was so good that I took full damage. Um, and then we can just jump into these spaces and activate these things to open the gates. So if you were paying attention to the story, the old man has been telling you to avoid a stinky bird. This is the stinky bird, and it's the woman who's been talking to you. She tricked you, she's taken the relics. We're going to use them for her own devices. Uh, so we have to go and stop her. And we can do that first by just dying, and it puts us right back at the start of the area. And now I need to do another like, look to checkpoint jump to get all the way up here to the final showdown area. This is a really good one as well. Again, it was so good that I took full damage. I'm glad I got that for the last door. I don't know why I decided to put that in. Right. Now we have a sort of final battle situation. She's launching energy orbs at us, and she's also spawning these in. We just have to deal with them as quickly as possible, and then we can get across to her. Where are you? Okay, so we hit her once, then we put a mark down. Deal with the four she puts down. Now we're gonna skip half the fight. Hopefully, not quite, okay. It's weird and momentum is janky. Oh, that, that didn't work at all. Time will be shortly. There we go. Put these down, time. Thank you. Uh, let's see if I die or if you get to see the cutscene. Oh, you get to see the cutscene. So sometimes you actually die before the cutscene triggers because she just keeps shooting you. But this is the cutscene. It's not very long. And done. So would you like to know your time? Uh, yes. 21.35. All right, I'm happy with that, yeah. Thanks, considering um, the weird mouse sensitivity and the uh, save messing up and all, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. Okay, uh, next, next is still me, because we're gonna play Anodyne. So we actually got another donation, another one from Monks, because you did the voice. Okay. Um, however, it was for fifty pounds. Oh right. <laughs> so thank you so much for that, monks. Thank you. Um, the comments is the voice pog, great cause and always down to support my boy pigeon, smashing it, lad. Thank you very much. Thank you, monks. All right. So um, that was clever pigeon with downward any 